Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Near the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today's Mass is being offered in memory of Zen Batal. Coming together as God's family in this, the first Monday of Advent, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Keep us alert, we pray, O Lord our God, as we wait the advent of Christ your Son, so that when he comes and knocks, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords with plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within our gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it, the tribes go up and the tribes of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judge, judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Pray for peace, O Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Because of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pray for your good.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. As we begin this season of Advent, we can see from our first reading in Isaiah this vision of hope and this vision of peace. But what is most striking in today's readings is that our Lord not only recognizes that he comes to bring peace to the people of Israel, his chosen people, but he comes to bring peace to all the world, to gather all people to himself and to leave no one behind. In today's gospel, we have this centurion who is a Roman leader, a soldier, coming to our Lord, recognizing who he is and desiring for his servant to be healed. Now, the phrase that we use in today's gospel, the phrase that we use before we receive Holy Communion, is the same phrase echoed here. Lord, I'm not worthy to enter under your roof, but only say the word, and I will be healed. Imagine how important this phrase truly is, because it helps us to remember that our Lord desires to heal all of us. He wants us to know that not only has he come for his chosen people, but he has come for all people. And in today's celebration, it's important for us to recognize that we live in a world where there are many people who still suffer, many people who are in need of healing, many people who do not experience peace. But we also recognize in this season of Advent that possibly even in our own lives, in our own nation, maybe even in our own families, we experience this upset. One of the gifts of the holiday season is that families can come together, that they can celebrate with one another. But I'm sure many of us recognize that at the same time, there is a price sometimes to be paid. Because sometimes old wounds reoccur. Or we recognize that we're not inviting a particular relative to a gathering. Or we might even know friends that we have grown astray from. Today's recognition during this season of Advent is to let us know that this is a new beginning. This is a time for us to look forward once again to the birth of Christ in our life. It's also an opportunity for healing. Our Lord came into this world, first of all, to bring peace to all people. And unless we allow that peace to reign in our hearts and in our lives among our family, we too are like those who turned away from Christ. We too are like those who Jesus points out, 
that even if the people in Israel had this faith, how magnificent it would be. Each one of us is truly God's chosen children. Each one of us are called to experience the goodness that Christ has in store for us. But he also calls us to recognize that we are the peace builders. We are the, one, the ones who care for those who are in need, who can heal wounds. If we allow the love of Christ to enter fully into our life, this is a season of Advent, a new beginning, a time of waiting, a time of hope. Let us allow ourselves to welcome the Christ child into our hearts. Let us bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray, first of all, for Francis, our Pope, for bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, and for the intentions of our Pope, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are least in our world, especially those who suffer because of violence or suffer because of illness. For them, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for an end to this pandemic and that we may be safe in these uncertain times, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who are in any way suffering because of loneliness, especially during this, these seasons of holidays, that they may be comforted by the presence of Christ and his servants, we pray to the Lord. Let us remember children throughout the world, especially those who do not have enough food to eat, access to any kind of health care, or an opportunity for education, for them we pray to the Lord. Let us remember the spe special intentions of the supporters of the Society Little Flower, for them we pray to the Lord. And let us remember our beloved dead, those who have gone before us, that they may be one with Christ, especially Zen Batal, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. And let us now bring our own prayers and our own longings before our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Father, we bring all our prayers before you. We, we come with a sense of hope. We come with a sense of enlightenment. We ask you to bless us and to bless all those we pray for. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a safe sign of peace.
Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Of Christ.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. To, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady Mount Carmel, go in the peace of Christ. The Mass is ended. Have a wonderful Advent. Thank you.